All right, let's uh, take a look at the week ahead. Pete McGuire joining us from XM. Pete, a very good Monday morning to you. Big week ahead. Looks as though you're all set to go for Melbourne Cup. You're dressed up, Absolutely. ready for it. Um, yeah. Of course, uh, that's the biggie next, uh, well, tomorrow, Melbourne Cup, along with the RBA meeting. What are you looking for? Andrew, you know me well enough, and good morning. I pick winners every day. <laughs> so uh, we go horses or markets. Well, we'll go markets this morning. So um, I think it's been a strong move Friday, which was outstanding for US equities. And what you mentioned, but you've got almost 25% of the firms reporting are coming up short as far as S&P 500. So, you know, they're not beating their analysts' expectations. I've got Bank of England this week, big news. What's happening with the Fed, 75 basis points, or is power going to uh, um, crumble and only look at 50? What happens as far as the RBA? Yeah, it's a week of a lot of action, and it's quite exciting. Yeah, it's a matter of where to look from an investor point of view, yeah. isn't it? So, well, let's first look then locally um, with the RBA. Pete, what are your expectations? And I guess what they're going to do from this meeting on? Well, I, Andrew, that's a hard one. I mean, do they sit on their hands or do they, and the impact as far as the property market has been very noticeable. And as far as the inflation story, they're in a little bit of a dilemma, the old RBA. So uh, maybe it's a 25, maybe it's a 50, the coin's up in the air. And, uh, you know, I think the jury's out. No one really knows unless you're the governor. And, uh, uh, but there's a lot of movement as far as BOE with 75 basis points. So maybe they're going to chase mm. and maybe it's going to be 50. Yeah, so I mean, the RBA, I mean, the board will certainly be looking at that inflation read uh, that we got last week, which, which was yep. obviously much worse than expected. But much. there's also a thought that if they were to go 50 rather than 25, that would undermine their credibility because of what they did at the last meeting. Well, exactly right, Andrew. So that's where the dilemma plays. And it's, uh, it's like a game of poker, isn't it? You know, you're... Someone's holding a couple of twos and, you know, and the other guy's got a full house. So it's a very, very difficult situation with what's happening. You've got India meeting straight after the Fed. You've got major economies ratcheting up still. And what goes on, as I mentioned, 33 years it's going to be for the BOE tip to deliver its biggest rise in 33 years. So that really shakes the foundations of central banks. And maybe we've got to move at 50. Yep. All right. So to the Fed, which is, of course, its policy meeting yeah. underway this week. Uh, interesting, though, that, become, that, that comes before that jobs read we get with non-farm yeah. payrolls at the end of the week. So, yeah. Pete, what are your expectations there? Well, I think it's going to be about a 75, Andrew. I think it's going to be hard for Parliament. It's baked in and everyone's saying it. Maybe they're going to surprise us and take 50 or 100. So, but it is a very, very big week ahead of us. Not only the Melbourne Cup, but more importantly, midterm elections in the US only eight days away. So you've got non-farm payrolls on Friday, how that's going to be, you've got the Fed talking and uh, you've got a US dollar index giving up a lot of heat at 110.50 versus where it was at its high going back to 116. So the US dollars come under a lot of pressure to the downside. How much lower does it go? And everyone's waiting for that number to drop from Fed Chair Powell. Yeah, you just see that, uh, you know, prospect of a recession there, Pete. Yep. Well, exactly. You know, Andrew, I mean, I think it's, you know, two successive quarters at business school I went to, it was always, and the one behind me there mm. went to a few. And everyone tells me you've got to, you know, two successive quarters means a recession. So, yeah, we'll just wait and see how the numbers drop and how the impact's going to be moving forward. I know that retail sales are very soft in the U.S., so hopefully that's going to turn around. We know they're a big consumer, but Christmas and certainly high gas prices and inflation are biting over there. I was talking about jobs that we get that read at the end of the week. I think we've got another chart, in fact, to just charting where a US jobs market is at the moment. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So there we are. And the, the, the jobs, I mean, it's been that's absolute V-shaped. And it, whether it's going to flatline from here or we're going to see a tail off, how the employment sector is going to be as far as big companies. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be an interesting next three to four months, Andrew, over the Northern Hemisphere's winter period due to employment and certainly the inflation read and where equities take us. Well, yeah, speaking of which, inflation in Europe, um, energy really driving those, uh, those prices at the moment. We look at um, European natural gas jumping around 20% last week. Um, yeah. As, of course, you know, those knock on effects from the sanctions with the Russia and what's going on in Ukraine. 
Yes, exactly right. I mean, it gave up a lot of that. I mean, we had a big correction to the downside as far as European gas, and then it was off again to the races last week. You've got Brent sitting at nearly 96 bucks a barrel. You've got $88 for WTI. So they've been, you know, bid up. And uh, with the US dollar coming off and you've got that really starting to bite now, my workmates are all across Europe and they're, you know, Northern Hemisphere and it's starting to get cool. So that's the time to turn the gas on. And uh, yeah, it'll be again how that's going to play from a uh, consumption standpoint and how much is in the wallet and the purse to heat the home. Yeah, yeah there's another chart to underline what's going on there in Europe at the yeah. moment. Exactly. Well, there you see with the Dutch natural gas in blue, how it really cratered over that August period in the summer, September, October, boom, and then you've had that big lift. So, yeah, it's, um, it's going to be a very interesting couple of weeks ahead of us. Pete, um, elsewhere in the energy sector, oil, uh, what are you seeing there at the moment? Bearing in mind also what's coming out of China, because once again, yeah. they're going back into lockdown. Exactly. So that's, you know, the impact that has, Andrew, as far as demand. You've got the demand destruction standpoint. I'm very worried, if you're, if you're thinking about energy, is really the diesel situation globally. We've got a massive shortfall. We've got less than 24 or 23 days of supply in the U.S. Europe's having a major impact. And you can understand from a shipping standpoint, transportation, and the role that diesel plays globally is a very worrying thought. So that comes down to refineries, that comes down to price, and naturally, uh, yeah, what's happening with China, it's very, very interesting how this is all, again, going to be a melting pot of uh, could be misery over the next couple of months. Yeah, I'm doing my very best to avoid driving our uh, diesel um, full drive at the moment because of just where those prices are sitting, uh, which are way above uh, where unleaded is at the moment. Absolutely, and this is the impact it's having to consumers and naturally with the shortfall. So we're feeling it here in Australia, but I tell you what, in the Northern Hemisphere, it's far more dire because of their, um, uh, what they've got as far as reserves. And Pete, once again, with China in mind, and uh, yeah. clearly also how it's affecting the property market, but more broadly with manufacturing, iron ore, of course, um, last week hitting two year lows. How are you viewing that at the moment? Well, it just seems to be a continual sell-off, you know, across a lot of those base metals, Andrew. We had a little bit of a rally with copper, but it's given up some of those gains. But the likes of tin, aluminium, and of course, iron ore, um, really starting to come under the under the whip. And how much slow? It's nearly the race to the bottom. So uh, we're conscious as far as the demand picture out of uh, China with a zero policy and what impact that has to naturally the price of ore and many other commodities. So. Possibly there's even further uh, hurt ahead of for a producer's standpoint and what impact that has to Aussie miners. And just finally, Pete, gold, how are you viewing that at the moment? Because gold bugs will tell you they have, they, they, well, perhaps they're hoping <laughs> that, they, that we have seen yeah, a bottom in the gold the price. Yeah. Look at the colour of the handkerchief, mate. It's gold, <laughs> you know that, brother. All so right. I think, yeah. Now, I, look, it's really, it's a 1650 play, Andrew, and it's been really hit hard, you know, it's, re it's kept underwater. But if you talk to the people across Middle East and Asia, they are all buying physical and physical silver from a consumption standpoint, retail, and that's big demand there and Diwali and jewelry season for wedding weddings in India and so on. So that, it's been strongly bought and uh, I feel that gold's best days are ahead of it and we've just got to wait that one out and uh, yeah, see what happens as far as currencies and how everything manifests over the next couple of months.